So, welcome to Supercharge Lambda Functions with Power Tools for AWS Lambda. Oh no, you know all this situation, you woke up in the morning and your Slack had a new alert popping up. Our custom metric failed storing notification ID in CRM triggered an alarm and got pushed to our Slack channel and we need to act quickly. Luckily, our developers think ahead of time and also provided us a CloudWatch Insights query right in the alarm to troubleshoot the issue. So we can now easily head over to CloudWatch Insights, run our query, and filter for the messages that were emitting the data points that triggered the alarm. So we're doing a CloudWatch Insights query for the metric name and getting back our results. In this log messages, we see the data point and our X-ray traces correlated with the emitted data point. Using this X-ray trace ID, we can now easily head over to X-ray and see what happened. We have our Lambda function invocation, was talking to DynamoDB tables, it was talking to external APIs, and retrieving secrets from the secrets manager. And we can easily pin, pin down where the error happened. We see one of these external API calls failed. But let's look a little bit deeper into our segments. So we have a detailed view of our invocation and have separated segments for each part of the application. And we can see, OK, our store notification ID call failed. So if we go deeper into this segment, we have our, stack, uh, our exception directly correlated with our tracing information and see failed to store notification ID in CRM unauthorized. So something happened with the authorization to this external API call. With this information, we can now update our Secrets Manager to a valid API key and see if our system is recovering. For that, we're doing another CloudWatch Insights query and see those er orders that have been failed if they are successful now. So we're running a CloudWatch Insights query, filtering for all the log statements that are correlated to our order ID. Running this query now gives us the confidence, OK, first of all, there was the failed invocation with the ID. And finally, the notification ID was stored successfully. And since we correl can correlate all our log statements with trace information, we can verify that in the trace as well and see, OK, this time the API call actually succeeded. Whew, time to recover. The system has recovered automatically by retries, by fixing the issues, so it's time to introduce me. Now is the time to pick up your phone, scan the QR code to get connected, because we only have 20 minutes to talk about power tools, and the next slides might be interesting for you as well. I'm Raphael, I'm an IT consultant working from Germany, helping our customers in their journey to the cloud, and especially in the serverless world. Besides that, I'm also a AWS Community Builder, a program run by AWS to connect with the community, help other people to learn more about AWS and get connected with the service teams. Besides that, I'm running an AWS user group in my hometown, Karlsruhe, southern Germany, to spread the, the knowledge about AWS, have interesting talks, and connect, get connected with the community. And finally, some of you maybe also know me from the unofficial reInvent Session Planner tool I built last year and this year to have the perfect schedule for reInvent uh, because there are so many sessions and it's hard to find the right ones for you. But you are probably here to learn more about Power Tools for AWS Lambda. So what is this library? It is an open source library managed, built, and maintained by AWS itself. It is people from AWS developing the stuff and keep put in all the knowledge they gathered throughout the years to embed best practices for observability, architectural pattern, and resiliency. So look again at our example we started off. We had a SQS queue that was uh, consumed by a Lambda function. It was talking to an external DynamoDB for storing some information and retrieving data from that. It was talking to external uh, other services like AWS Secrets Manager. And it was also talking to external APIs. That was where the error happened. We observed our system using Amazon uh, AWS X-Ray for tracing and CloudWatch for metrics and logs. 
So, but how were we able to trigger an alarm on a custom metric? For that, Power Tools has a utility library or function called the metrics class. So we can simply instantiate a class that is responsible for emitting tracing uh, met metrics data to CloudWatch. So once you instantiated your class, you can add data points by calling a fu simple function like add metric, give the metric a name and a number how big the data point should be. In this case, I'm increasing the count for failed notifications by one. And you can also add for these statements some correlation IDs, for example, the X-ray trace ID, so you can easily correlate a data point with an invocation or other relevant data like a customer ID or whatever is relevant. Once you have set up all this, you can, for example, use the metrics in a catch handler of your invocation. And whenever there's something failing, like in our example, we're emitting a data point. And based on this data point, we then can build up CloudWatch alarms to trigger notifications, for example, in your Slack channel for operations. How does that actually work? So the library itself is not doing AWS API calls. It's using the embedded metrics format from AWS. It's a speci specific format in a JSON structure you can emit to your CloudWatch logs. It will automatically be picked up by the CloudWatch agents, will then, which will then generate the data point in CloudWatch. And as you can see on the bottom, it also has the nice X-ray trace ID we added in the example before, so we can correlate each data point in the end with some invocations from the customers. We then moved over in our troubleshooting to X-ray. So once we identified our trace ID, we moved over, over to X-ray. And for trace, as you maybe know, if you're just using enable an X-ray on Lambda, you don't get that much information as we had in our example. So how did we get there? Power Tools has a nice helper function for that as well. The tracer class you can instantiate similar to the ones for the metrics and give it, for example, a name, to service name to correlate your traces. And then, whenever you want to do an SDK call, you can simply capture the SDK calls with the tracer class. So call the capture AWS client function and wrap it around your client. So all the, all the API calls that are made through the SDK are actually captured from X-Ray. And we had our exception directly correlated with a segment in our, in our uh, trace. That was possible because you can e easily add errors to as a metadata to the tracing information you have already. Just pass in the error message and it will be added to the trace. You can also add, add additional information like annotations to filter down the traces in your system. For example, error or a customer ID, so you can filter down traces in the search for, tra for in the trace view based on these attributes. And if you need further information that might mean doesn't need to be indexed in the traces itself. You can add metadata to have that at hand when you're troubleshooting your things on tra x -rays. If you want to add custom segments, you can simply use it with a helper function like that one. So the tracer class has uh, utility functions to get the current segment, open up new segments, then you can invoke your business logic, and then automatically capture errors while they occur. And with this helper function, the with segment thing, you can basically wrap any function you're invoking in your handler, and you get a separate segment with, with detailed timings within the segment, and automatically capturing errors that are happening within this function. This in action looks then, for example, with one part of my application was the notify customer item potent, and I wanted to have a separate segment for this part of the application. So I simply wrapped my function invocation with my upper function with segment, give it a name, and I get, if you go down, a separate segment that's called uh, with the name I specified in my X-ray trace view. And it's simple as that, to get better overview of your tracing information. As, you can, as we saw in our example, since we're automatically capturing the, the error, we get this tra stack trace and the f error message in our tracing view whenever we're troubleshooting our problems. We fixed our problem by updating our uh, secret value in our secrets manager. But it took us some time to really take into account and uh, recover from our failure. That's because I'm using the parameters utility from PowerTools for AWS Lambda. 
It is a utility to uni with a common API to retrieve uh, parameters from either System Manager, Secrets Manager, App Config, or DynamoDB. But what's handy about it, not only that it has a common API to retrieve data from all these sources, it also enables you to cache results in the Lambda function. I don't know, what about you? I personally have written this kind of logic hundreds of times in my career to retrieve a parameter, cache it so it's not uh, retrieving the data for each invocation itself. And now with Power Tools parameters, you have a simple utility to retrieve the data from one of these sources, maybe automatically transform it from a JSON string like a secret to a, JSON, uh, to a Java string object automatically. And you can specify how long the parameters should be cached in your Lambda invocation. And our system recovered automatically. But where did this retries actually came from? As we saw in our architecture, we, we are consuming an SQS message. And one of the best practices for SQS consumption is report partial batch failures. So if you're, if you're consuming a full batch of messages from a queue, you should report back which messages had been successful or which one has been failed. That's a quite difficult task because you need to consume the message, then you get the Lambda invocation, and then you have to iterate over all these messages and keep track of the message ID and if the processing has been successful. If this processing was successful, we can simply delete the message from the queue, or if there was an error happened, we need to report back. So we need to have as the response of the Lambda function needs to be a list of message IDs that should be put back on the queue. Power Tools for AWS Lambda has a batch processor class there as well. So all this logic of iterating over the messages is handled by this utility. So all you have to do is specify uh, the process partial response, instantiate a batch processor class, and saying the source is SQS. If you want to switch sources, you can simply switch out the source type, maybe a Kinesis stream, and still reuse the same uh, code, uh, uh, the same implementation on. And then you have to, only thing you have to worry about is how to handle one message in your record. Whenever there's something failing, just wait an exception, and it will automatically be captured by the batch processor and reported back to the, lump, uh, to the SQS queue. In our example, that made it possible to put messages back on the queue, which were automatically retried. And once a new secret was retrieved, the problem was fixed, and we could go on, and the message was deleted from the queue. But since we retried our system multiple times, we had to make sure that those uh, API calls that had, exceeded, uh, that had uh, been executed successfully before doesn't, uh, doesn't execute again if we retry. So we needed to add item potency for some of these AP external API calls that are writing to some external service. Power Tools for AWS Lambda has also a nice capability for that to fix all these item potency issues with this simple library. All you have to specify is a persistent stores because we need to store some uh, in some database which messages have been already processed, what was their result, or is there something ongoing right now? This can be a quite challenging job to implement, so PowerTools has done the hard lifting for us and implemented an item potency helper here for us. So we're specifying which DynamoDB table we want to use to store and track the, message pro or the, the processing of this function call and make it item potent, so when we invoke it again within the time to live period, it will automatically retrieve the old result from the DynamoDB and re report it back at the same position it was occurred in the first place. And if there are multiple invocations running at the same time, it will also fail because there's already an invocation running for the same function with the same input parameters. So we, we are instantiating our persistence layer, saying we want to store it in this DynamoDB table, and then we are just wrapping a function with the make item potent helper from the Power Tools library, give it the persistent store and some config operations. And now this function is fully item potent. You can invoke it as much as uh, you want, and it's only executed once. Finally, we, we validated our success by running a CloudWatch Insights query and filtering all the messages independent of invocations by the order ID. How was that possible? We used structured logging to to have an easy way to query our data in 
CloudWatch Insights. We don't have to pass log messages. Instead, we have dedicated attributes. We can filter down our search results. With PowerTools AWS Lambda, you get a logger for free. It is a drop-in replacement for the existing console log statement, so I highly encourage you to use that. It's simple as instantiating a logger instance, and then whenever you want to log a statement, you just use a logger statement instead of the console statement. But it has some nice features as well, because you can append persistent keys, like a customer ID. So once you identified which customer this invocation is uh, relevant for, you can add it to the logger. And for each following log statement, this attribute is automatically added to the log statement. So you don't have to do the manual work all the time. On top of that, it also has uh, a capability to inject default information about the Lambda function itself, like the function name, the memory configuration, the X-ray trace ID. All these things are automatically injected into your log statements if you wrap your Lambda handler with the middleware uh, for injecting Lambda context. So a lot of these, Lambda, uh, of these standard attributes then are automatically added to each log statement, so you can correlate your, information, your log statements more easily throughout your process. Maybe if you're using centralized logging, it's quite nice to see which function actually emitted this log statement. With that, we supercharge Lambda functions with power tools for AWS Lambda. We use the batch processor to process multiple messages from a batch automatically and report back every failure to the SQS queue. We use the parameters utility to retrieve secrets from a secrets manager or any other supported source that is uh, capable for power tools for AWS Lambda. We made our external API calls idempotent by using the idempotency helper and simply wrapping our function that we want to make idempotent with this helper utility. We extended our X-ray view by automatically instrumenting external API calls, all the SDK calls, and add its custom segments to have a perfect view whenever we are looking at a trace and see what's happening in our Lambda function. We triggered alarms based on custom metrics. And the metrics class from PowerTools for AWS Lambda was it made it very easy to emit this data without any additional latency added to our Lambda function invocation. And of course, structured logging is very easy using the logger capability for PowerTools for AWS Lambda. It is best practice to use structured logging throughout the system to easily filter down data and query for it when you need it. But maybe you ask, OK, all these examples have been written in TypeScript, but I'm using something else. The good thing for you, PowerTools for AWS Lambda is also available in other languages. For example, Python, Java, .NET. The capabilities might vary between those languages because each language is developed independently throughout the, the, the teams. But still, most of the capabilities I showed today are available throughout all these languages. So if 20 minutes was not enough for you, Power Tools, there are other se sessions happening throughout the week from the AWS team that is building the library or other members of the community. So check out the, the schedule. Maybe go over to powertools.aws Lambda and get started today. They have a great documentation and that will be easy to start off or connect with me. That's basically it. Thank you for your attention. Feel free to connect with me. I stay around here next to the booth for further questions and have a great reInvent 2024.